Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mangles on here, bringing you another Destiny 2 video on the new onslaught weapons. 50 waves of enemies getting up Lord Shax's ranks, granting his favor, unlocking those boxes, and getting some fan favorite reprised weapons. If they were really reprised weapons, then they would have brought back kindled orchid instead of the midnight coup but i digress they brought the succession in here for some reason right now i'm going on a tangent instead of bringing back the tatara gaze we could have used more black armory weapons to come back besides just blast furnace maybe even the show of force would have been a good kinetic addition to the ranks but we got the recluse we got the mountaintop we got lunas how and they have forgotten about not forgotten but i think that's going to come back as a competitive weapon to get people into that game mode so they also brought back the guillotine instead of bringing back something else because we already have really good void swords we have good vortex frames especially if you're a warlock you have one of the best vortex frames in the game i don't know why you'd want to put on anything else they did bring back the whisper of the worm as a craftable weapon that really no one cares about and everyone wants to get their hands on the crafted outbreak perfected so that's going to come later that's going to be a whole separate video with the whisper of the worm and the outbreak perfected but we are going to go over each one of those fan favorite reprise weapons not every single one but some of the ones that you can target farm succession uh the recluse and the hung jury for some reason so we will start with the fan favorite the recluse now the recluse coming back submachine gun lightweight frame let's look at the og the og stood out for a very good reason that's because even after all of its stats gets put together on this static roll that I have here in the gunsmith, the Master of Arms used to do, I want to say about 25% damage bump to your weapons. Now Master of Arms does a 15% damage increase. So it's about as good as Radiant. So if you're using it with a Void subclass, you're not being Radiant. You got Master of Arms. There you go. But we are going to look at the new one right now. So we got the Recluse and... We're going to go ahead and give it a range master work. Let's say you're looking for a range master work. And the the range on it was already pretty good, right? When when we compare it to the to the OG. So, if we increase the reload speed, that's maybe something that you'll be looking for with with a recluse because you're probably going to go for feeding frenzy. That's going to up that reload speed. Mm -mm. Mm. And with doing the with doing the reload speed masterwork and giving it the small board trait, we're going to increase that range by seven. We're going to increase that stability by seven, and the reload masterworks will give us that plus ten. The recoil direction right out the box does come with a hundred percent recoil direction, so no need to worry about that. The ricochet rounds, people are going to want to go for that range, but I am a big fan of either high caliber rounds or the armor piercing rounds, so I'm going to go with the armor piercing rounds. And again, it comes with the feeding frenzy. You have the enlightened action, subsistence, um, threat detector. Threat detector is pretty good. You got the combination of destabilizing rounds and repulsor brace, uh, along with the dynamic sway and the hip fire grip. So. One of the things I want to talk about again is Master of Arms. That's going to kills with any weapon, improves this weapon damage for a short time. Master of Arms, I want to say lasts for 5, 10 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Let's go for 10 seconds. Target lock got nerfed for a submachine gun, so you don't want that. Frenzy, if you're going to be inside of a battle, you're probably going to want to use that. You're probably not going to go for destabilizing rounds on the recluse. If you're a hunter, you're probably using Gur Falcon, so no need for that. Surround is pretty good. You get the 30% damage increase with that. And then you have, what is that? The tap the trigger. Tap the trigger is always good. And we do have the new one, the Desperate Measures. Weapon Final Blows grant bonus damage. Melee and Grenade Final Blows grant a larger damage bonus that can stack. So, which perk are we going to choose for the last final pick here most people are going to go with massive arms or you're going to get a roll that's going to have massive arms on it. you're probably never going to let it leave your hands but i would suggest that you continue to make this thing the laser beam that you want it to be i would probably go with a dynamic sway tap the trigger or if you're the fan favorite of the feeding frenzy 
uh, massive arms. I guess go with that if you want to be a little basic. So the curated roll, you're going to go with the ricochet rounds, feeding frenzy. You're going to go with the massive arms, get that little damage bump increase. But you have so many other options here. I don't know why you wouldn't go ahead and switch it up a little bit with the recluse. If you get your fan favorite recluse with the feeding frenzy, massive arms, I mean, use that if you, you want to. But I say get two of them. Try out something different. Go with the, the dynamic sway reduction. Go with the tap to trigger. Maybe get surrounded in there if you're a hunter. Um... I think with the new subclass changes that's going to come out with some additions to the Void Kit, um, Surrounded for a Titan with the Recluse is with, uh, with the Dynamic Sway is going to be a good way to go when going for that new weapon. Now, I know we're talking about the Recluse here. I was doing some comparisons earlier with the old Whisper of the Worm and the new Whisper of the Worm. But we're looking at the Recluse here with the range increase, the stability increase, all around increases when we compare it to the older recluse now we have the mountaintop the mountaintop with the micro missile used to have the sticky grenades and then that would you could lock off doorways with the mountaintop you could attach it to i don't know friends and have people run into people with uh, mountaintop sticky grenades you could do some shenanigans the mountaintop got nerfed um fairly quickly got sunset fairly fast so if you enjoyed it, it's cool, but the mountaintop may be a hard sell for some people to go ahead and switch over to if you already have a crafted kinetic breach loader grenade launcher. And also, Tusk of the Board came out. It is a wave frame. Wave frames are very fan favorite in Destiny. The mountaintop's a fan favorite, so you got Tusk of the Boar, which probably no one played Iron Banner last week besides the Destiny 2 tryhards, and got them a good Tusk of the Boar. But if we go with a decent mountaintop, right? If we go with a decent mountaintop, we're going to want the... What is it? Probably going to go with the quick launch. The quick launch increases the velocity and the handling speed. We want quick shots. We want the velocity up. If we're looking to just increase the handling, then we're just going to go for, I want to say it's a confirmed launch. I think that's the one. So we have the spike grenades, again, that do come back on the mountaintop. The mountaintop's micro missile got a little bit of a buff to where it has that um, blast zone. If you shoot an enemy close to you, shoot it at the ground, it's going to do reduced damage to you. Now, I'm not going to go over all the perks here that it does have because most people are just going to go for auto-loading holster. Auto-loading holster is... I mean, breach loader, grenade launcher, auto loader, holster. You can't really go wrong with that. Now, harmony on this is a good pick, but we also have recombination. I'll probably go with the recombination just to see what that uh, is like. But all in all, I would probably, in the end of the day, go with a harmony. That is a 20% damage buff for getting kills with another weapon before I switch to this weapon. So, mountaintop, spike grenades. I want to say spike grenades gives it an extra uh, anywhere between 12% to 65% for breach loaders. On a direct hit, you're, you're doing massive damage on a direct hit. You're doing okay damage if you don't get the direct hit. But the harmony is going to make up for that um, not so great hit. Or if I'm just, if I get a kill, I'm shooting the mountaintop downrange and then it sticks to something and enemy walks past it. Kind of like a, it's just like a catch-all with the with the whole harmony thing. Again, it is a kinetic weapon, so it is going to be competing with things like Tusk of the Boar. It's going to be competing with what are some other good ones? Uh, it's going to be competing with I don't know if anyone's using Melita's Birthright. Uh, you're going to have to give up Forbearance for it, and we know Forbearance made a comeback. If you have a crafted partner, Dust, that's always a good one. The Wild Style is coming out later, along with a good undercurrent. Again, that's a wave frame. And Wild Style just may be too good to pass up with this double fire mode. The other double firing grenade launcher we have in the game is the Wilder Flight, which I know a lot of people probably don't have, or they probably don't use it. But the Wilder Flight can actually roll with some pretty good combinations such as Feeding Frenzy and Spike Grenades in, in those combination slots there. So going with the auto-loading holster, going with the recombination, 
with the spike grenades, going with that uh, confirm launch in order to get that velocity speed up. The compare button wasn't working here for the mountaintop, but we'll revisit that one later. So if we go on to the next weapon, which is the succession. Now the succession is, uh, I'm I try to make this one a bit quicker. The succession that you can get versus the succession that you can craft doesn't even compare to one another. The succession that you can craft has enhanced perks, that's enhanced reconstruction, that's enhanced box breathing, enhanced recombination, that is enhanced focus fury. So we got a reconstruction, focus fury with the Bray inheritance trait. Now the one you pick up don't come with the Bray inheritance trait. Now that's any damage that you do with that weapon grants back ability energy. That's all ability, ability energy. That's not just something minor. So while you're dealing damage to the enemy, while you're picking off ads or putting bullets down range on miners or big bosses that bray inheritance is coming in in the clutch and it can combine with a whole lot of different subclasses like how can i say it's it is the arc trace on a weapon equivalent to so you're getting even if you're getting 1% uh, ability energy back for every time that you hit with the succession with the Bray inheritance that's 1% more than any other weapon can do without giving up one of the the column slots for that without giving without giving up that final or that third column slot for pugilist or demolitionist the the succession has fairly good range you can kit it out for stability um, you can even you can even just like really focus in on stability and kind of give up some of that range if you if you do want to like give it a give it a good arrowhead break type of feel and that gives it that 100 percent recoil direction a 33 stability is nothing to be too too mad about now this other one you can get kind of the same perks for the succession but you're you're just playing catch up with a raid weapon that with a real raid weapon like the real deal the only thing you're really getting here is if when you unlock this gun if you could break it down just to get the ornament right that would be worth it in my opinion instead of going after and chasing the god roll succession i would just go for playing the deep stone crypt um once a week or something and trying to get a real succession but i for those that want to don't want to go into raids i hear you that you're glad that this came out if you were to, I guess what kind of be broken if you could get this weapon and then like pull the the crafting pattern out of it. So then you could actually farm this succession that way instead of going inside of the raid. But they do want you to play the raids. As you can see, this weapon compared to the raid version of this weapon does not, doesn't even hold a candle. You say you get a knockoff version of Bray's inheritance in that final column area. It looks the same on paper. The succession's at the bottom of the screen. It looks the same on paper, but that Bray inheritance changes the game significantly. It doesn't even make the other succession good. I guess I, I couldn't find a word to really put with that besides good. Uh, doesn't make it more better. Doesn't make it uh, even better. Better. It's a it's a it's a bad succession. Now we go to the Edge Transit. This one's gonna be kind of fast because we're not even looking at the old Edge Transit. The old Edge Transit was legendary shards. That's that that was this hidden perk. It was uh it was immediately legendary shards upon arrival inside of your inventory. Now the Edge Transit, there's only one good Edge Transit in my opinion, and that's going to be the hard launch, the spike grenades, the field prep with the explosive light. Now we're going to want to knock that blast radius down. Now knocking that blast radius down, uh, if you didn't know, if you use spike grenades, you get a bigger damage multiplier when you have your blast radius uh, shrunk a little bit. So not having a maxed out blast radius with spike grenades does give you more of a better chance at a better damage multiplier. But people want to see numbers go up. People want to see green. People want to see that blast radius bar shoot out to the far right outer reaches of the edge transit. But you're not going to get all that. So 
take away this uh, blast radius, go for increased velocity, pump those out, use the field prep, pump out those grenades. You can go at full court. Full court does a 25% damage bonus from a distance. You don't got to count on explosive light. But explosive light gets up to about, I want to say, 86%. Um, damage increase for the drum is it uh is it is it that it could be it could be 85 percent or it could be uh 65 percent but it's, it's better than 25 it's better than 25 65 or 85 but it's better than 25 so you can go full court you can go you can go with that one you can use it as an ad clear machine, repulsor blades, destabilizing rounds. They know I'm going to do that with the S-Transit. They want to see it put out damage. But if you already have a crafted, uh, I want to say it's a Regal. What is it called? Let's look through. Let's look through here. Regent. If you have a good Regent, then maybe you don't want Edge Transit. Or if you have a good swarm of the Raven, you don't need a uh, edge transit. Or if you have, um, I don't know, just anything else besides edge transit. Crowd pleaser. Everyone loves the crowd pleaser. Crowd pleaser can actually roll with Thresh. So, oh yeah, we're talking about hung jury now. So hung jury. No matter. Uh, which one of these hung juries do you have? Do you have old school hung jury? Do you have old old school hung jury? Or do you have real old school hung jury? We'll, we'll look at all of them. So if we talk about old school hung jury, we're going to go with the arrowhead break. We're going to go with the... Um, <clears throat> What are those? What are those rounds called? Accurized. Accurized rounds. So we're going to go with... Uh, Arrowhead break. We're gonna go accurate rounds, rapid hit, explosive payload. If there's anything else here that you would like, I mean, I don't know, but it's adept. So we're gonna throw in a, uh, a range adept mod on there to increase our range quite a bit. So it's gonna give us plus 10 more range. So now we have 72 range. We have increased reload speed with rapid hit. We got explosive rounds. Uh, this one, I ended up putting the handling mass work on it by accident, but it should have been a stability mass work for when you see it later in the video. But, um, so then the, all the stats would have looked the same basically for all these hung juries. So again, so we go old, old school hung jury. That's going to be the arrowhead break. That's the accurized rounds. That's going to be the rapid hit. And this one actually doesn't get explosive uh, payload. So we can go for the kinetic tremors. Um, we could have went with the box breathing. Could have went with the frenzy. But ain't no one really messing with any of those. Because kinetic tremors is kinetic tremors. So rapid hit kinetic tremors. If you have this one, you're probably rocking this one. Right? With a stability mass work. And then it's adept. So we're going to throw a range um mod on there to give us that more range that more and more range and then if you have old old school hung jury then this one actually goes with uh, arrowhead break accurate rounds rapid hit and explosive payload with the amalong uh trait there hung jury has always been quite weird because hung jury is supposed to be one of the best but if you've ever used Jade Rabbit, then Hung Jury probably just sits inside of your vault along with all your other adept weapons like the Loaded Question and the Eye of Soul adept that you probably have that you don't use or you have some other sort of adept weapon in there that you just don't use. But Hung Jury is one of those adept weapons that feels like it's been power crept by so many other precision or not even precision but rapid fire scout rifles rapid fire scout rifles have made a quite the bit of the comeback here if you have a good jaraka 3sr that's good uh the tarak suppose just feels better because it's a lightweight it's not a precision um contingency plans always been good if they ever brought back the Eternal Blazing, I bet people would be all over that. Uh, Night Watch is still good. That's another lightweight. Uh, if we're talking... 
Uh, overall, good Scott Rifles. Randy's Throwing Knife is, is a big fan favorite. The Imperative that came back, that High Impact Scout, does still feel better than the Hung Jury. No one wants the Scholar. The Guiding Sight probably got broken down into Legendary Shards. Uh, let's see. What's another good one? No one's using the Prophet. And if you got a good vault safe, people are probably using that one. Tarnished Metal is probably sitting in everyone's vault. The Tears of Contrition is so good, people feel like it's illegal to use it. And Doom of Chelchus is a raid weapon, and we know how people feel about raid weapons. Pointed Inquiry is a scout rifle, if you ever heard of that one. It did come out when the Witch Queen launched. And the Oxygen SR3. The Oxygen SR3 would have been a better pick to come back as a precision scout rifle and it's one of the, if i if, if i may say it would have been a fan favorite they could have re overhauled the mega nura uh perk on it right it was an it was an oxygen sr it's a, it is an oxygen sr3 um but it had a dragonfly uh firefly effect kind of it was the thing in between dragonfly firefly but they could have gave, gave it like mega, I don't know, called it mega flare. And it could have been Firefly with uh, Dragonfly together on this unique weapon. So right now what it says, uh, Mega Nora, Dragonfly deals more damage based on the number of precision hits it dealt beforehand. So combine Dragonfly, Firefly together, keep this on there, add it back into the game, and give it some, some more traits, right? So that Mega Nora would have been its origin trait but Bungie said they brought back fan favorites but I could think of a hundred different more weapons that they could have brought back instead of the ones that they did bring back we are looking forward to the blast furnace we are looking for the Luna's how and the not forgotten when those do come up and some people are actually looking forward to midnight cool because it looks cool the mountaintop is going to get used for a little bit but that's probably going to be used by PvP people and the recluse isn't going to leave the hands of sweaty hunters that run the Gur Falcons on a particular void build if you will so hopefully you guys did find something interesting in this video hopefully you guys like my breakdown of the weapons that came back in the onslaught game mode 50 rounds for lord shacks getting up that reputation and those gains like share and subscribe and share the video and i will see you in the next one